生现场的送医的公共照管，这也是说，啊，至少那么年八年上。I resolve to bring about the awakening of all beings into complete Buddha. To bring about this goal with this wish of the heart, with this wish uh, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, we should now set out to listen to the profound Dharma instructions which the Buddha is about to give. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, regardless of all of these different eons, regardless of all of these different places, these different runs or pure runs, it is in this particular world, at this particular time, that the Buddha chose to appear and to demonstrate the awakening of the Buddha. This is something that's which, as we have already heard, is exceedingly rare. And therefore, we find ourselves in an extremely fortunate situation. It has taken us lots of uh, uh, positive imprints, lots of merit accumulation, to be able to enjoy such a fortunate situation in the first place. <laughs> The next line of uh, this first verse in this song of Kamachakna says, Although Buddhas do appear, it is rare for their teachings to endure or to remain. Even in this comparatively fortunate <coughs> eon of ours, in which a thousand Buddhas are supposed to appear, it is by no means uh, a given that the teaching of these Buddhas uh, will forever remain. If we were to look, for instance, at the very first Buddha of this year, I was known as Korotik or Kaputanda, um, he appeared, he taught, he disappeared, and his teachings are also gone again. They do not remain with us anymore. Then the second Buddha of this year, uh, who was known as Sertuk in Tibetan or Kanakamuni. He also appeared in his world, he taught the Dharma, and yet again, both he and eventually later his teachings disappeared. The third Buddha then followed, who was known as Rusum in Tibetan or Kashaba, and also neither he still remains with us nor are his teachings still excellent in this world. Presently, we find ourselves in the time of the Buddha Shakyamuni, and uh, we find ourselves in an extremely fortunate situation that his teachings for the time being still do endure. <laughs> Kamachakna continues to say, 
among the six kinds of beings, or rebirth as the six types of beings, it is rare to acquire a human body. Now, since time without beginning, we have re-embodied ourselves time and again into one or other type of rebirth. But to be able to, to, to achieve a human body is considered to be extremely rare among these various types of rebirth that we could possibly take within this cycle of existence. Innumerable times we have been reborn in the deepest hell realms, undergoing the most unspeakable sufferings of heat or cold or combinations thereof. We have been reborn as such time and again. There simply is no number to be put on the number of rebirths that we have acquired in this way. Just as many times we have been reborn as hungry ghosts, enduring the suffering of extreme hunger and extreme thirst, etc. We have also been reborn many times, uncountable times, as animals, and of course by all means we have also occasionally been reborn as humans. Within this cycle of existence we have also innumerable times taken on a rebirth as a demigod, where uh, there is the predominant suffering of constant of strife, fighting and warfare going on. And we have also innumerable times achieved the rebirth as a god, which is uh, the existence of which is mainly characterized uh, by the suffering of change, by the, the suffering of uh, falling down from that uh, high type of rebirth again. From among all of these types of rebirth that we could possibly take within this uh, cycle of existence, it is said that the human rebirth is the most precious one, and at the same time also the rarest one. The next line says, within the four continents, it is rare to be born in the Jambu province, or Jambu people, Zambaling as it is called in Tibet. This refers to the classical world, world view of uh, Indian, ancient Indian cosmology, so to speak, which was also adopted into Buddhism. And this type of cosmology, we uh, consider there to be a central mountain, which is known as Mount Meru, above which there is the seat of the various types of gods. There is the <coughs> heavens of the gods, of the 33 types of gods above uh, which, uh, uh, the central one of which is being uh, inhabited by the god uh, Brahma. Indra, I'm sorry, Indra, uh, Indra that is. And then in the four main directions of the compass arranged around the uh, bottom of this Mount Meru, there are the four types of uh, uh, continents. The eastern one is known in Tibetan by the name of uh, Luhapo. It is a continent that is characterized by beings living there or by human beings living there who have an extremely pleasant physical form. They are tall, they are well-built, they are good-looking people, beautiful people all together. The problem is that uh, even though everything on the outside is so nice and agreeable on that continent, there is no Dharma. The teachings of the Buddha have not appeared on that continent. <laughs> Majuva, <laughs> 
and concentro. On the southern side of Mount Meru, there is then the continent which is known as uh, Jambu Dvipa or Zambulim in Tibet. This is the continent in which we found ourselves. It is said that uh, on this continent there is a large lake, which in Tibetan is known as Matrupa. And out of this lake grows a huge tree, a tree which is of the most wonderful kind, which carries the most wonderful types of fruit. And occasionally one of these fruits, as they are wont to do, would fall down from the tree and then land with a very pleasantly splashing sound in that lake out of which the tree uh, grows. And uh, this sound uh, is what uh, gives this continent, Jambu Dvipa, uh, its name. This is to be mentioned uh, like a, a, a very pleasant, a very wonderful holiday destination. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly this world of ours, this continent, jumbled with all, jumbling as it is called in Tibetan, is the world into which the Buddha chose to appear, to be born, is the world in which we have been born. And, uh, that indeed uh, reflects our very great fortune now, doesn't it? On the western side of Mount Meru, then we have that continent which in Tibetan is known as the Balanchuk. This continent is characterized by extremely great prosperity. All sorts of riches, all sorts of prosperity that you could possibly imagine are available there in abundance, and uh, particularly uh, there is uh, lots of cattle particular cattle which uh, uh, produces uh, the fulfillment of all sorts of desires and wishes that we could possibly think of. So in this way, this is a very fortunate and a very prosperous world or continent for that matter. However, to strive to be reborn there is utterly useless because there's no Dharma. <laughs> And then there is the northern continent of the northern world, which uh, in Tibetan is known as Draminian, which means unpleasant sound. This world also is rather beautiful, rather prosperous, lots of happiness and fortune is being uh, experienced there for the most part, except about seven days or so before one is about to pass away, before one is about to die. An unpleasant sound is being perceived by those who are on their way to passing on. This unpleasant sound becomes stronger and stronger until it uh, uh, transforms into an utterly terrifying and utterly unbearable premonition of impending death. For the most part, 
being a rather more agreeable world, it is also rather more useless to strive to be re reborn there, because as in the other worlds, except for the southern one, also there is no Dharma. <laughs> The next line of the text reads, even within Jampa Pipa or Zambali, <coughs> the appearance or flourishing of the Dharma is rare. Now even within this southern world of ours in which we were fortunate enough to be born, this Zambali or Jampa Pipa continent, even within this world of ours, it is rare for the Dharma to appear and for the Dharma to flourish. Which means to say that this is a rather large world and to be born under such circumstances and in such a place where the Dharma actually is excellent is an extremely rare thing. We could be born anywhere else within this world, still be within Jungle people, but still we could have chosen a spot where there is no Dharma available. So that we should have had the fortune to be born in a place and under circumstances where within this huge world of ours the Dharma actually is available is an exceedingly rare thing and can just not be appreciated, appreciated enough. The next line says, uh, even if born there, which means in Jambalipa, in this continent of ours, it is rare to have full faculties. Which means to say that even though we might have been fortunate enough to be born in a place and under circumstances where Dharma is potentially available, still it is difficult to have achieved such a rebirth in which all of our senses and faculties are intact. There might be those who are born blind without the gift of eyesight, or those who are born deaf, or those who cannot express themselves because they are dumb, etc. and so forth. So even if we were to uh, have the great fortune to be born under such conducive circumstances, still there could uh, possibly something be wrong with us in such a way that we would not be able to fully comprehend or appreciate the Dharma. So again, to be born in such a way uh, that we have all of our senses and faculties intact, which allows us to understand and comprehend and to practice the Dharma in the first place, even that is very rare. One more time, I'm sure and again the next line says even if you have full faculties or senses it is rare to think of the Dharma now there may indeed be many who have been born in such a way that all their senses and faculties are intact and they might even have been fortunate enough to be born under such circumstances and in such a place where the Dharma <coughs> is fully available but to have developed an interest in the Dharma, to truly wish to study and practice the Dharma, to truly take it to heart, is yet again an exceedingly rare uh, thing. There are all too many, as we all know from personal experience, who would potentially have that possibility, but who have no interest, no inclination to concern themselves with the Dharma whatsoever. In comparison, 
we who have come together here to listen to the Dharma teachings uh, are indeed extremely fortunate. And again, as uh, Kama Chakma time and again uh, points out in his uh, in this uh, song here, this is a very extremely rare thing. Furthermore, it says, even if you desire the authentic Dharma, an authentic guru is rare, or to meet an authentic guru is rare. So even if you should have made up your mind that you actually want the Dharma, that you actually wish to learn and practice the Dharma, to meet an authentic master who is able in all regards to truly teach you the Dharma in an authentic way is, again, ex exceedingly rare. How fortunate uh, are we in this case that uh, we all share as the master of the lineage of Solomon's the Java Kamapa, uh, uh, how fortunate are we uh, to have met such authentic masters? Yet again, this is considered to be uh, something exceedingly rare. And then, so the Kamapa, the Kamapa, I think, the same talk, the same. And then, Kamapa, the wrong one, the same. Who is the wrong one? The wrong one is the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. When it comes to the Kamapa, how he came by his name, how he came by this black, black Vajra crown that constantly is to be found above the Kamapa's head, etc. Uh, Chi will explain in the next session. And then At this present moment, let us now rest in our mind nature, which is free of any self nature, free of any substance whatsoever. And let us train for a short period of time in peaceful resting of shamatha or shin. <laughs>
Troy was a Troy. 